Good afternoon, good evening, world. Hey, 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 how are you? And we've got a wonderful friend, guest, uh, author interview today with Joanne Flynn, also known as Booth Astor. Hi, Joanne, how are you? I'm wonderful, Dave. <laughs> wonderful to be here. And it's uh, great that we're about 12 hours difference here, and I am really want to congratulate you on the recent successes with uh, a couple of books that you've just launched. And would you like to maybe hold it up? We can both hold it up. <laughs> <laughs> there you've, we go. Got, you've got two of them there. There we go. And uh, a and little another. Karma in Action and Karma in yeah. Action, the ebook so edition. Yeah, so, so Karma in Action, was, was the first one and um, came out oh, three weeks ago, uh, creating a structure, uh, a structure for those of us that are in business to put karma into daily practice. And it's, it's at one level, highly logical, highly business focused. You can take everything in here back to modern science. And then you can also take it back to the framework I've used is some of the ancient wisdom that we grew up in a lot of different wisdom traditions. Um, so yeah, so that, that that's fresh off, fresh off the uh, press, as it were, um, and uh, recent recently available. And I'm so delighted that it's come to a mailbox near you, and that you've got your own copy in hand. Have you had a chance to explore? Oh, I went through it. A, a basically a one sit uh, experience. Go through it. Uh, uh, use it. Uh, write down. Do some of the exercises. I've shared it with a few people. It's been really wonderful. And I, this whole concept of karma, I love the fact that you're presenting it uh, to allow corporates to use it, to allow people who are leaders to use it. It's not just something that's some spiritual woo-woo. No, there's a, a science to it. And then there is a, a, a light, happiness, joy, a part of it also. So it really can assist people in Canada right now. Mental health is a major issue. Well, let's bring it to personal responsibility, accountability, and allowing us to maybe shift in a way that can be of service. And uh, I, that's, that's what some of the takeaways that I, I got from karma uh -huh. in action. Wow, brilliant. It is the funny thing was, you know, over, like many of us over the years of our professional lives, we do a whole variety of different sorts of things. And one of the things that I've done is I've helped really large organizations put in tremendously big change. And people used to come up to me and say, how on earth did you do that? I mean, we're talking like super senior people, CIOs in banks, uh, people running, you know, multi-billion dollar projects at IBM. I mean, really large you know, high risk types of work. They're like, you just, how are you doing it? And fundamentally what it was getting back to, although I didn't have the words for it then, was literally, was this, was doing the sorts of things that are in this book. And then when I went to the University of Oxford and I shall say Paris and started setting a whole different layer of organizational change and transformation, I got the modern science behind it. But there's something about when we, we kind of talk about modern science, it clocks into our logical mind and we start processing it logically, which is a funny thing. It makes us get heavy and serious about it, which when we're in a time of high stress is sadly not actually the most effective mechanism. When we're in high stress, we actually need something that light, you know, as you picked up, lightens us up, gives that sense of, oh, there's hope, there's space, there's it's not all dark doom and gloom we need that you know that classic little thing we, we need that little light at the end of that darkness to help us through and i found the karma metaphor had so much more power in it and the, and the fact that when we start going back into the different wisdom traditions the structures and the thinking in there and i just felt like there was amazing you know symmetry in these two different worlds using the constructs, the constructs are identical, but the language is different. And that the things that were creating powerful change and transformation in the way of deliberately focusing on what you're wanting, that what you do shows up back to you. I mean, like in the corporate world, let's take like a super classical example of a leader goes, I want people to follow me. Um, but right now, I don't want to tell them the truth. You know, that small seat, that, you know, that small little thing is I'm not telling the full truth. And I don't know 
about everybody, but I know a lot of us grew up and one of us really core skills as kids, working out when our parents were telling us the truth or when they were telling us a fiction, right? Good, good, good childlike skill to have, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when mommy says yes, does she really mean yes, right? Or, you know, <laughs> all that good stuff. So we've got like decades of experience on this. And we're in the office and you're hearing the senior guy telling you, or, or gal to be fair, telling you the stuff and you're going, bullshit detector, bullshit detector. Liar, so, liar, pants on fire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly what's going on in the back of our head, right? As an adult, we're going, but inside we're going, yeah. And we're just going like, we're just like, I don't really trust you. And so, and then that leader is going, but, and I'm, I could tell many a true story um, about, you know, particular leaders that I've worked with. I had one that was so predictable in this. You couldn't, you just, nobody believed a word they said. And then they wondered why people wouldn't follow them and wouldn't go and step out of the comfort zone and would only do the most narrow because it was the only way they were safe. Right. And then the, oh, then we had a, another leader who was absolutely fabulous and was, I would say, one of my walking role models and I've been lucky to have several. And he was just so consistently this sort of person, you know, the, the karma type person. I just knew that if I was doing anything with him, that if he said something, he meant it, I could rely on it and I could build on it. And yeah, you know, he was, so the little tiny seeds he was doing, like the little, little things he was doing was creating the bigger reliability and truth. And we did magic on it. And this was, this, and so people were like, like, why is this so brilliant? And you're going, fundamentally people wanted these big hero stories <laughs> and it wasn't a big hero story it was this concerted ownership of that if we are disciplined about doing the right things and doing the small things with with love and care and discipline for others it's amazing what will happen mm -hmm. um so yeah so it's 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 i've seen the value of this in concrete business in million dollar things and I've seen it in our day-to-day -day lives it's just in when I show up like in this way like right now midst of coronavirus and you know works disappearing and clients I have more business on my books this year than I had last year congratulations I know it's wonderful. And you just started a lockdown in Singapore. What's uh, what's the general feeling, or how is that uh, for you? I imagine it's going to be a wonderful creative time. Yet, please give <laughs> us a bit of an update of what uh, what's the experience in Singapore. So Singapore Singapore was the first place outside of China to to formally diagnose somebody with with coronavirus with COVID nineteen, and then. Very soon after, that was a, a tourist in, in Singapore, and then soon after, there was a Singaporean national. So it's, it's, Singapore has been living with this since pretty much late January as something live in Singapore. And the government have put in a whole series of different measures to contain the spread of something like this, thanks to what we went through with SARS, you know, 18 odd years ago. And so as a culture, we had, we had some memory of how do we handle it, which I think has helped a lot. But the, with, ev with everything shutting down everywhere and so many people coming back who had it and people being, still being out and moving, we've had a, lo a lot of social degrees of freedom, which has been wonderful in, and, and people being you know, carefully managing it. But it, didn't quite, it hasn't quite cracked the, the, the contagion nut, as it were. And so last week, the government made the call that we need to go to. And what they're calling it here is circuit breaking rather than lockdown. Right. And I think there's a real wisdom in that different choice of words. Um, Singapore, for anybody, you know, was a country that had, um, back during World War II, you know, had some very, very vicious, nasty internment camps. The word lockdown brings back really horrible oh, memories. Circuit breaking is very, it's, it's uh, probably the most um, powerful type of metaphor that they're simply doing something that adds a, another, another level of protection and to, to protect your system, to protect your computer, circuit breaking. Yeah. Exactly. So it's a, it's a, it's a much, it's a, from a social point of view, and I'm thinking about the karma in this one, 
of it's a, a story and a metaphor that creates a more constructive space mm -hmm. than some of the other ones. So e even like this, the, their, their choice of the metaphor and language has a wisdom in it for what, what it will seed and allow as possible in there, which you know, is, is really quite wonderful to see. And so we're officially, today is officially day one. Um, we have had progressive containment measures going from um, events below 500 to 250 to 10, and now it's, they're pretty much going. It's, it's not law mandate, as in like, it's, there's not the police out there saying, excuse me, sunshine, what are you doing on the streets? Um, buses are running, public transport's running, uh, food places are encouraged to be open to serve people. And all the delivery companies out there are, you know, whisking things around. But that said, the, you know, so, you know, there's plenty to eat. Thank God for air conditioning and the internet, you know, we can still talk to people. Um, you can go out for a run on the street or in my case, a walk, you know, when it's not too hot and sunny. Mm -hmm. So a lot of day-to-day -day life can still operate. It's, but it's the simple day-to-day -day life that's being able to operate and all the sophisticated stuff's got to be done online. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you know, to this sort of technology. So, so have you got your one or two or three things that you're doing to stay resourceful, to uh, move through this with elegance and ease? What's, uh, what's going to be the way that you're going to do it? Well, I'm, I'm looking at going, so today's day one, so part of today was reflecting on that. And I, I've got three, three things that I'm focusing on. One is to be really conscious to make sure I do have a couple of hours every day that's about doing something for me. Be that going for a walk, be that getting in and you know, doing some doing paintings and just being, being in that deliberately personally nurturing creative space. I mean, the, the art space is a nurturing one for me. Because I'm realizing, I'm just feeling a lot of the systemic pressure that's around. And I, I know that I will need to look after myself if I want to be able to have any presence for other people. And then the other, then the other two pieces are, are one is, you know, life and business does go on. So, you know, concrete time to go and, and work and support the clients that I have you know, and the projects and the visions and the transformations that they want to do. And then the third one is taking the space of the karma and then the, sec the second one that I put together, which you know you were, you were seeing online that managed to, um, I talk about karma. I had this one pip Harvard Business Review books was like completely rocking. That lovely oh, Oxford versus Harvard, right? Well, I mean, I doesn't like one to put it that way, but I, I certainly, <laughs> a little bit of just going like, sometimes we think, it's so easy to think because we're not this great big brand that we can't do something that makes a difference. And yet the truth is everything is created by a whole series of small actions that accumulate. I mean, even the pyramids, huge, wonderful things they are. You know, a lot of small things added up to make those pyramids. And so the third thing that I'm, look, I'm focusing on doing is putting together online, an online program to help business leaders deliberately put karma and kindness and then was create that resolving business prosperity that comes through that kind of approach you now into the way of doing things to create that resilience on the human side but also to build that to build the structure that creates that business strength as we go through what are going to be some different kind of times very so, good yeah that so, sounds like a very powerful strategy or triad of activities the self-nurture the service and the creativity. Yep. Fantastic. That's the funny thing is that so many people are running around saying, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm so bored, I'm so bored. Like what is that from a karmic or from your perspective that they're creating this and they're amplifying this boredom, this boredom? What, what would be your play or your perspective on that? If I think back to when I've been in that space of boredom, and sometimes, to be fair, sometimes there, there's, there's real creative value in boredom. It's yes. sort of like deliberately creating a, a space for it. And then there, you know, so there's, there's, there's one space in boredom on that one. So I'm not, I'm not dissing it as a, no. a, a there's, construct. It's it serves also, right? Yes, boredom yeah, it, does serve. <laughs> it, it, does, it does, does serve. 
But then when there's that space where we're whinging about it, because I mean, as opposed to the creative space where we're seeing it and using it as a gift, mm -hmm. in the whinging about it, it's, there are a squillion things one can be doing. Yes. So which would be inspiring? Which would be of service to yourself or to others? To others would be really cool. Um, there's, you know, we get enough health advice on how much screen time we should be getting. So, you know, you can kind of be going like, okay, how much Netflixing is, you know, binge watch a bit, then go do something. Um, you know, mindful of this one, one of my things the other day before, you know, the shopping thing was, was limited on Saturday, I went out and I bought a new thing of um, teak oil. So one of my bits is go and make sure over the next while I go and really go and look after all the wood, you know, the nice old wood pieces that I've got, so including the, the, the chest of wood behind, and re-oil them. Beautiful. Yeah. Just, I mean, there are so many simple things that are about not just nurture of ourselves, me, putting that time into creating slightly healthier meals or having actually, oh, like this, a live conversation with another human being or taking some time with one's garden and plants or deliberately, I mean, in the Northern Hemisphere, spring, it's spring, it's Easter, right? Spring cleaning, where it's with uh, gardening, uh, preparing. So there's so many things that we can do here. Yes, uh, yeah. definitely a, a time where there can be a transformation, there can be a shift of the seasons, there can be transitions, yeah. uh, beautiful terminology that could be in play. Yeah, exactly. And then, it, and then the other thing is then it's sort of, then it's sort of like going like, okay, if I'm in that boredom space, am I going to consciously use it as constructive, creative, reflective, that, empty, that creating that deliberate space of empty? Because we've got so, we got so used to being busy, it was like, <laughs> that it, now we're going like, well, wait a sec, let me hold that bowl of emptiness. What on earth could come? Right. You know? absolutely. And that does create like having that willingness to give it that creative, that emptiness, that creative, that creative space. But in that, all sorts of cool stuff happens. You know, or just going like, oh my God, yes, okay, it's spring now. What else, what, what are all these cool things that could be gotten on with? One of the things you did in your book also is the power of small. You talked about partnering and you've partnered mm -hmm. with our dear friends at Buy One, Give One. Share a little bit about what went there. And I, I, I read your recent quote that you've had your pay it forward of uh, a number of liters of water. Share a little yeah. bit about that concept for our, our friends. Okay, so, so the, the part of the concept here in, in uh, car, we, we want to call it karma or the golden rule is that, you know, the golden rule is expressed as, you know, what you do unto others, you know, do unto others as you'd like done unto you. You know, karma is traditionally expressed as, you know, what you give to others comes back to you. So this is the same sense of what you put out returns. And so in this construct is when we start getting deliberate and saying, if I do small things of good to somebody else, it will show up in my world. So buy one, give one is a beautiful organization that was established, what, a bit over 10 years ago now? Yes. Yeah, both, um, uh, I'd say close, yeah, to probably the ideas were 15 years ago, I imagine, yeah. 2005. Yeah, I think yeah, exactly. That's what I first remember and, and, and it's moved forward. And what they've done is create a beautiful construct where we as, bus as business owners can contribute, um, like have our equivalent of the foundation. So we don't have to be as rich as Bill Gates, but we can have our own foundation that says, here are things that I value and that are important to the way I see the world. So one of the things that I lived in Africa and then in, in, in parts of Asia as a kid when things were really rough. And I saw the practical advantage of when people have water, like without water, you, know, you can live for quite a long time without food. But if you don't have water, people, bear, you know, our brain stops functioning, our ability, you know, just like, it, it's a super fast thing. So when people have water, they can stay alive, they can plant crops, they can grow crops, which means they have food, which means they have a start for, for life and longevity and business and just like all the layering of things on it. So water has been, a, and, and Piscean too, so you, know, you rationalize on lots of ways. It's be a very important element for me. And so with the books, um, 
everything that I'm making from the sale of the books is going deliberately into funding water in parts of the world where it's a challenge. So with the sales of the book so far, we've been able to fund uh, 43,600 days of water, um, in this case in Cambodia. Um, next, next time it might be, I might pick somewhere in Africa to bounce off the Africa side. Ooh. And it's just really lovely going that even in the midst of everything that's going on in our world, and there is a lot, that we're able to, that I am able to go and do something. And I say we because it's the people who bought the book, you know, so the, you know, you're part of the we and anyone else who has, has created, created that construct that other people are benefited by it too. People that we don't ever see, but in that, um, you know, old, old wisdom of, um, you know, Warren Buffett uses it, but, you know, many of the wisdom traditions use it about how we all are benefited by the trees that somebody planted for us. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's in that kind of space of help, helping them just helps make our world better as well. Beautiful. I, I love the idea I, I, the fact that we're going to get to see the, the benefit and I get to hear your story about Cambodia and your relationship with water. And it really does tie in the, this multiple giving this multiple service that, that is just so beautiful and that's a, a nice congratulations to uh, be able to share the message because when I read it in the book because it's funny I've been writing a book lately and I've got a, a little chapter on Masami for instance the power of small oh, yeah. and the fact that mm -hmm. she had this realization when she was in Bali sitting on a rock and in 15 years of nurturing and growing and then I when I received your book it was just like really wow that's very cool so again what comes yeah. around goes around pay it for these are concepts that I think your book really captures uh, and defines and describes so I'm glad I was able to get a little bit more detail that this is also going to Cambodia this is being of service and that the water is that element that really nurtures life yeah it's sort of like it you know and as you go it keeps it in the flow doesn't it well, you you found your flow. It sounds like you've got your you've got your art. You've got some of your consulting. You've got your creativity with your writing. Your storytelling with your programs. That sounds like flow to me. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Would you like to share a little bit about what you're flowing into or flowering into in the weeks or months ahead, and perhaps uh, share about uh, something that's in process or. Maybe you want to wait. Which what would be your your intuition telling you today? Well, I'm happy to share what's in process. Sure, it's, it's in process, so it doesn't have all the answers. So one of the so in this is one of the pieces that I've also realized in this is that with the way things are moving, that I need to let go of this idea of having everything like perfectly pulled together and all the pieces aligned, because look, things are moving so fast, you know, what was the truth and made logical sense like four weeks ago? It's not the world right now, right? So it's like, don't even try that one. Just try and take a constructive step forward. And in that one, the next constructive step that I want to take is to create a online done with you type process for business owners and leaders to be able to put the, car the karma in action into action in their business um and you know that's you know that for me that's got a a lovely space of how how can it create more service how can that help other organizations serve more how do we create a bigger ecology of you know and i use that word deliberately of leaders and businesses who are just going like we are create more, we create a better world that way. So why not? So it'll, it'll, it'll be a combination of, you know, short online things and group coaching. So I think we get a lot of wisdom from other perspectives on, on that. And uh, I will keep you posted as that, that works through. I know we've got Easter coming up and Easter's got to be a beautiful time for rebirth. Absolutely. Yeah. It's funny of, of all the stuff I wrote down in my journal, the, yeah. I put number one here was, uh, again, I had my questions written for you. And then I had number two was a um, uh, chat with Booth Astor, Joanne, Anna. And then I had resilience. And so yeah. when you mentioned a little earlier, bringing the karma in action and working and assisting with resilience, it's just something mm -hmm. that 
uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, the book, when I read it, it's like you're teaching people to be more resilient, to be more creative, to be more present. And that type of knock on effect is going to be so beautiful. I wanted to sort of bring this session to a close with one big thing. Let's uh, ask you, so what's one big thing that you want to share with people that perhaps the experience with the book has taught or what you're experiencing with your circuit breaker in Singapore? Okay. The, the one big thing I would share right now is that irrespective of what is going on, it's still entirely possible for each one of us to create something magnificent. And my invitation would be, we have 24 hours today, we've got 24 hours tomorrow. This is, a, this is just the truth of the world. We may as well use it to do cool stuff and, and, and create magnificence and help other people. You know, otherwise, you know, that's just, the one resource we've got just disappeared. So, you know, that would be, you know, my, my big one of going, you know, when I came back, I was telling you, when I was in Tasmania four weeks ago, my stepfather was in ICU. And when I came back, I was not, you know, I came back, I came back to launch this. I had not expected to write this as well and have it physically out and feeding our business review. You know at least for a moment uh, and because I was willing to step into the space of just going well what can I do with this time that I'm suddenly gifted with all sorts of different things are open now and this is true for absolutely everyone who listens to this beautiful it really sounds like that there is a preciousness to your time there's a preciousness to this one day do something you're proud of do something that brings joy happiness kindness um, yeah that you can be of service mm -hmm. just a little thing is a really great thing it doesn't need to be build the Taj Mahal tomorrow it could be smile help somebody it, with their groceries yeah and that prayer for somebody Exactly. And what I've noticed is that once we've done one small piece, it's easier to do the second, and then it's easy to do the third. And then there's just a little bit more space, and then it's easy to do the next one. And it, it which is why I think that the metaphor that's used the seeds is so powerful because it, you know, a little, 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 little. I really like that metaphor in your book, the seeding, the seedling, the, the, the seeding friendship, the seeding kindness. Uh, it's a very wonderful metaphor. And, and what grows from that tree, from that seed, from that bamboo, hey, that's almost the, the letting go and, and being curious on what that might grow into. <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful thing. It also takes the pressure off. Absolutely. And the, and the fun thing is, for people as they as, as, as if when you play with this one of doing it it's not about how other people respond and react it's mm. just about i i know i've done this i've consciously gone and done this right no judgments about who or where the other person is and then in the evening to you know, the you know you would have seen the sort of the, the sort of peppermint tea meditation just as you're going to sleep Think back on the things that you've done that are deliberately kind or nice or helpful for other people and just go, oh, yeah, I've done some good today. Very good. You tend to have a better sleep, which is Absolutely. what I'm good right now. It's very good. Well, thank you so very much, Joanne. Congratulations and continued success with your multiple personalities, dimensions, expressions, levels of kindness. And uh, again, congratulations on Karma in Action for all of our friends out there. Go check it out on Amazon uh, and uh, have a great Easter and a fantastic 2020. Thank you, Dave. Thank you very much for having me on. All right. Ciao for now.